The Battle of Thiepval Ridge was the first large offensive mounted by the Reserve Army of Lieutenant General Hubert Goff. During the Battle of the Somme and was intended to benefit from the 4th Army attack at Morville by starting 24 hours afterwards. The battle was fought on a front from Corselet in the east, near the Albert Bapholm Road to Thiepville and the Schwaben Redoubt in the west, which overlooked the German defences further north in the Ankara Valley and the rising ground towards Beaumont Hamel and Serre beyond. Thiepville Ridge was well fortified and the German defenders fought with great determination, while the British coordination of infantry and artillery declined after the first day. Due to the confused nature of the fighting in the mazes of trenches, dugouts and shell craters, the final British objectives were not reached until a reorganisation of the Reserve Army and the Battle of the Ankara Heights. Organisational difficulties and deteriorating weather frustrated General Joseph Joffre's intention to proceed with vigorous coordinated attacks by the Anglo-French armies, which became disjointed and declined in effectiveness during late September, at the same time as a revival occurred in the German defence. The British experimented with new techniques in gas warfare, machine gun bombardment and tank infantry cooperation, as the German defenders on the Somme front struggled to withstand the preponderance of men and material fielded by the Anglo-French. Despite reorganization and substantial reinforcement of troops, artillery and aircraft from Verdun, September became the month most costly in casualties for the German armies on the Somme. Background Tactical developments Some debate had occurred among the reserve army staffs on attack tactics. The second corps commander Lieutenant General Clark Jacob advocated attacks by one line, to avoid supporting lines being caught in German counter-bombardments on the British front line and no man's land, which usually fell six to eight minutes after the beginning of British attacks. Jacob considered that the supporting lines played little part in the success of the attack and merely aided to casualties. Jacob also advocated afternoon attacks, since the six made by his corps had succeeded and the two dawn attacks had failed. The reserve army commander Lieutenant General Hubert Goff was less certain but did lay stress on the supports crossing the danger zone swiftly. Goff also used the evidence of a film of an attack on 18 September to decide against infantry advancing in groups. Because of their vulnerability to artillery and because German defences in the gaps between groups were unsuppressed, allowing them to cut off the forward infantry and stop the advance of supporting groups and troops on the flanks. Prelude British offensive preparations The 18th Division moved south after three weeks' battle training in the 3rd Army area, joining 2nd Corps on 8 September. All company, battalion and brigade commanders reconnoitred the ground and a lecture was given by Brigadier General P. Howell, the 2nd Corps Chief of Staff. Howell briefed the division on the local situation and recent experience, which the unit commanders found helpful, having been in Flanders since August. Two divisional field artilleries were attached to the division and 2nd Corps put a battery of 6-inch howitzers and four tanks at the disposal of the divisional commander, Major General Maxey. On 21 September the trenches south of Thiepville were taken over from the 49th Division and work begun to prepare them for the attack. Engineer field companies, pioneers and two battalions of infantry dug about 2,500 yards of assembly and communication trenches to link them to existing positions which were improved. Supply dumps were prepared over four nights of digging. The road from Orthuil to Thiepval was repaired and hidden behind a brushwood screen, which enabled supplies to be moved up and wounded to be brought down under very little German shelling. The division arranged a stratagem, whereby the assembly in Hindenburg trenches were to be left empty after the first waves had advanced and the reserve battalion held back to avoid the German counter-barrage. As soon as the counter-barrage stopped the troops were to advance rapidly in small columns. British plan of attack The British commander General Sir Douglas Haig directed the reserve army to attack towards Achit Le Grand and the Third Army, 
to stand ready to attack at Gomacourt as a flank guard. The reserve army commander Lieutenant General Sir Hubert Goff ordered the attack for 26 September at 12.35 p.m. to push the Germans off of the high ground of the Thiepville Ridge, from Corslet 6,000 yards west to Schwaben Redoubt by the Canadian Corps under Lieutenant General Julian Bing and Second Corps commanded by Lieutenant General Claude Jacob, each with two divisions in the attack. Three stages were set for the advance, with halts of ten minutes and one hour before the final advance. The Canadian Corps was to provide a flank guard on the right, by taking the German trenches on the spur northwest of Corslet. The right of 2nd Corps was to take Zollin Redoubt Zollin Fester in the second stage of the advance and stuff Redoubt at the final objective on the crest of the ridge. On the left the Corps was to take Thiepville in the second stage and then reach Schwaben Redoubt, which overlooked the slope down to St. Pierre de Vienne. It was emphasized that the Germans were to be driven off all the crest to deny the Germans observation towards Albert and gain observation of the Ancre Valley. The German front line west of Thiepville was to be captured during the advance. About 230 heavy guns, howitzers and mortars with 570 field guns and howitzers were available, the guns of 5th Corps north of the Ancre, being used to fire on the German river crossings and trenches on the south bank from behind. 2nd Corps artillery was to pay special attention the demoralization of the German garrisons of the Redoubts and Thiepville village. While certain German trenches intended for the British infantry to occupy were not bombarded sufficiently for destruction, two changes were introduced into the artillery plan. Gas shell was to be fired by four inches mortars and the machine guns of both attacking corps were arranged to fire overhead barrages into the gaps between the artillery barrage lines. The creeping barrage was to move at 100 yards in 3 minutes, then at 100 yards in 2 minutes, when no man's land in the German front position had been crossed. Six of the eight tanks available were allotted to Second Corps. Divisional reliefs were to be delayed to keep the attacking troops fresh. Beginning on the night of 22-23 September on the right and 24-25 September on the left, Zero hour was set for the afternoon instead of dawn, because Maxi wanted only three hours of daylight for the consolidation on the final objective, so that most of the work would be done after dark, to avoid exposure to observed artillery fire. The Thiepville attack was to be followed by an attack astride the Ankara River. Orders for the capture of more objectives and to gain ground at every opportunity were issued on 28 September and were intended to combine with the 4th Army attacks planned for early October, which became known as the Battle of La Transloy. Stuff and Schwaben redoubts were to be captured by 29 September and Stuff Trench by 1 October. German defensive preparations The front-line troops of the 7th Division, 8th Division and the 26th Reserve Division, from Corslet westwards to Thiepville which had a garrison of two regiments, one attached from the 2nd Guards Reserve Division and the ground from Thiepville to St. Pierre de Vienne, which was held by a regiment attached from the 52nd Division. The German front position on the south face of Thiepville was about 300 yards in front of the village, about 1,000 yards back was the second line, Stauf and Regal about 1,000 yards and another 1,000 yards further back was the third line, Grand Court Regal. The cellars under Thiepville Chateau had been extended into a complex of tunnels, used as storehouses and shelters. A sunken road running up the middle of the village to the cemetery had been lined with dugouts and in the original front line to the west were 144 deep dugouts. Thiepville had been held by Württembergisches Infantry Regiment near 180 since 1914, which still contained many pre-war trained soldiers. The regiment had not been moved and was allowed to make its own arrangements, using Bapome as a base. Zollin Redoubt guarded the first line between Corslet and Thiepville. Stauffen and Schwaben Redoubts anchored the west end of the first and second lines. 
Muke Farm to the east of Thiepville had become dangerously isolated, 350 yards beyond any support trenches, connected only by a half-demolished trench. The losses incurred in its defense weakened the garrison in the area, for little corresponding gain. Beyond the southwest of Thiepville, the original German front position ran northwards to St. Pierre de Vienne and the Ancre. The German garrisons were alerted that an attack was imminent on the 22nd of September and German artillery began harassing fire on British trenches and supply dumps. The British assembly for the attack early on the 26th of September went undisturbed. 